As you may have guessed, here on the local footy show, we love our local footy history. And a uh, little bit of that being unearthed uh, a few weeks ago there, Benny. Yes, uh, down with the Caulfield VFA Football Club, Ken Peace actually has written the book to uh, formulate some of their history and uh, some of the things that happened down there at the Bear Cave. I uh, played with South Caulfield in 1962 over in the Federal League and uh, the year after Brighton and the VFA disbanded and uh, there was a merger between Brighton Football Club and South Caulfield which became the Brighton Caulfield Football Club in 1963 and uh, for two years and then they dropped the Brighton name and the Guernsey and became Caulfield in 65. So uh, we weren't winning too many games in those days, but uh, we were very spirited, and, uh, but we just didn't have uh, many class players. We were like a suburban, suburban football club going into a bigger competition. If you look through the history, which we've been able to do uh, in the last year and a half, it really was a suburban club wedged in amongst some heavyweights like Sandringham, Oakley, like Paran and Port, all in that vicinity, and we were basically a, a, uh, a junior club that, that, that was formed to the VFA. And so we actually, we sort of feel we were fairly successful in, in coming from that, you know, that, that far back to actually win the flag in 73, and we made the finals in 76, first division, and, and we were pretty competitive for the next four, five, six years up there as well. Yeah, we did only have a short history. We started in 65 and um, it was all gone in 87. Um, we achieved a hell of a lot in that very short period of time, coming from um, very much the bottom of the, uh, of the road in second division. And um, in 1973, we managed to um, pull off a unique treble whereby we won the thirds, the seconds and the seniors. Uh, all, all won premierships to push us up into first division and we remained in first division until uh, 1981. Uh, we weren't relegated, we were uh, pushed down with uh, some uh, uh, rather questionable decisions made by the VFA at the time whereby um, a couple of first division sides were pushed out to so that they could include Werribee and um, Williamstown from second division. They were sixth and eighth, I think, on the ladder in second division. Got promoted just for uh, probably only political reasons, and also they may have seen the way the future was about to unfold. The impetus behind the book was uh, uh, definitely Ray Moore, who was around the club for many, many years. Um, worked as a secretary for the club, very talented writer. Some people uh, that were on the recipients of that humour didn't like it too much, but it was often directed at other individuals, but by and large he was very well respected. He wrote a, um, an excellent book himself on the Corfair Football Club, which Ken Peace acknowledges has had a great platform for the book he wrote, and uh, he captures the, the wit and the spirit and the um, personality of the characters of the players exceptionally well. I mean, he, he could have been a great journalist had he chosen that pathway in life. There's a lot of his works included in this book and to that we've added um, uh, in, information from Jimmy Moore, Ray's son, myself and principally John Onset. I, I should say now that John's been the absolute push behind this book. We wouldn't have succeeded without him. What about the off-field uh, aftermatch? They were legendary times there in the Bear Cave. Well, a lot of it's covered under the Official Secrets Act, and we're not allowed to allow a lot of it out, but uh, some of it's mentioned in the book. I think, really, it was a great night spot in one regard that we got a lot of blokes from AFL clubs down, and in one way it was good, and another way it was you know, probably a bit distracting for young kids coming to the club who sort of thought that was what we were about. We actually had a good bunch of core of people that were very serious about their football on the field, but we did... Uh, Fair to say, I think we had a fair uh, go at the aftermatch too for, for many a long year, but yeah, good memories. Bears and the Bear Cave were it's synonymous with VFA football. Oh, that's exactly right, and we sort of picked up on that and decided it wouldn't be a boring old. July the 27th was wet and we went out and beat Geelong West, turned the page and it was a week later and we beat Northcote. It wasn't going to be one of those books at all. Uh, there's a lot of very, very funny stuff. Some of it's quite personal, um, some of it's quite saucy, but it's, uh, uh, to a Caulfield person it's a must-have, to an outsider it's a very, very readable book.
Tell us about the premierships. Well, it, it was quite incredible. We, uh, our weekend started with the thirds playing uh, at Waverley before the, scene, uh, before the seconds, and they drew the match. The next team up were the seconds, and they drew the match. At the 18 minute mark, the following day, in the seniors, the scores were level. So the poor old supporters that follow team after team haven't seen a result after all that football. The, uh, the seniors drew away and won by 14 or 15 points, I think it was. The seconds and thirds had to wait another week, but they also had to endure all the hilarity and the, the excitement and the drunkenness and the usual behaviour that goes on after a premiership. And they still had to hold their form, which we both did. Uh, and we, I think one won by 13 points, one won by 14 points. So it was principally the same result in all three games. It was quite incredible. Mick, on that day, they must have used about 20 footies, mustn't they? It, it, was, uh, yeah, it was one of those typical spring days where the, uh, the northerly breeze was taking the ball to one end at, um, at Turak Park for Ansground. And uh, I think six or five or six at least were used. But I do know for a period of time in, in, in the last quarter, Somebody went into our rooms and got an old ball that we used for training. It was almost a basketball, and we had to use that until a few more of the balls had been retrieved from outside the ground. They were put back on the ground, and we resumed the game like that. But uh, it was quite incredible. <laughs> we, could, we could have had a re well, we might have had to use one of the kids from over the fences footy to finish the game, but uh, it all worked for us. Tony Jewell was one of those prodigious kickers on that day. He was one one of the culprits kicking it Tony out of the ground. Put one or two over the fence that. Day. One of, one of the great goals you'll ever see was when John Logan had the ball on the boundary on a very, very tight angle. And to everybody's surprise, he turned and off one step passed the ball back into the wind about 45 metres to Tony, who got himself free at centre half forward. And from there, Tony managed to uh, get onto a big torpedo, and uh, it was probably the match clincher. Today, we're launching this book, and we look like having a crowd of 250 to 300 people. So it just goes to show what a club it was and what a lot of great time people had there when we can pull this sort of function together after all those years. So we're very delighted with the efforts that have been put in. As we go to some more highlights from that great game, Sunshine and Spotswood. Spirited contest here at Sunshine. Chance for the